This presentation is brought to you by the Lean HR and People Development Summit, a product of Lean Frontiers. Learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash LHR. Good afternoon. It's exciting. So my name is Mohamed Saleh, and I am the director of the Lean Office at Hartford Healthcare. Now, Hartford Healthcare is um, 22,000 employees as of recently, and we currently serve around 18,000 lives per day. What I'm here to tell you today is really around our lean transformation. And for the last 11 years, kind of a really quick recap of what we have been doing. So in 11 years ago, we decided that we were going to unite our values. Uh, this took a lot of effort from our HR department as well as our um, operational folks to get together and unite our values. We had almost 12 or 14 values at that time. Every hospital had something different, and we had to come to kind of one consent. From that, we had to also come to one vision. And in that vision, we had to understand how every single hospital had its own characteristics, and HR played a very significant role with us in order to be able to set that vision. At that time, we wanted to make sure that we were most trusted for personalized, coordinated care. Each one of those words really meant something for our transformation, and you're gonna see me highlight it as I go through this. We started this by talking about how we want to evolve as an operating system around Hartford Healthcare, and we called ourselves, and we didn't really want to brand ourselves towards something specific, and we wanted just to make it our thing. And we decided we're going to be, we just, it's how we work. It's our operating model. So we decided to call it H3W, how Hartford Healthcare works. Uh, those are the three H's and the W. And from that, so many things have evolved from it. The first thing that evolved from it was that we started establishing, around 10 years ago at this point, um, just staff meetings. It sounds very silly, that we, you know, but we had so many managers that have never actually got together with their staff on a monthly basis. So we started creating those um, platforms and we started hiring a lean office. At that time it was called just continuous improvement to really just putting people together, have top-down communication, have idea generation and dashboards. That was the basis of this. We then started introducing, around seven years ago, our leadership behaviors. This was really led by our HR department in the beginning and with partnership with our continuous improvement department. At this time, our leadership behaviors were something that was very um, important to us, and so we did it really top down. We had our senior leaders go through the training around our leadership behaviors and not tell anyone what they were. And what they were asked to do is the people that reported to you had to tell them how their behaviors were changing and what behaviors they saw. And they had to do that for two years until we were able to deploy it throughout the organization. At this point, 18,000 of our employees all have leadership behaviors. It's part of their performance reviews, and it's something that's really hardwired in our organization. And anyone that comes onboarded on their first day of the job, that's the training they go through is our leadership behaviors. This really allowed for Lean to have just a perfect platform to launch on because the leadership behaviors were so similar, if not almost identical, to the Lean leadership behaviors. Our CEO at that time felt like there was a lot of um, inconsistency there going on. Our staff employment, our engagement score was probably one of the worst in the country, and we really wanted to bring that up to the next level. And our ideas started to plateau. People were only coming up with ideas of things they remember two days ago, and really, it didn't really give us that cycle that we wanted. We had a lot of patient experience issues, and so we wanted to move it to a different platform. Each hospital was do, use, using a different methodology, and uh, that methodology, we had Six Sigma, we had Ford, we had Lean, we had everything around the system, so we had to come to one united uh, scientific method of problem solving. That scientific method we decided as an organization was going to be Lean, because we really wanted to drive this through a principle-based architect, and that's what we started doing. We started creating this visual that was really anchored in our values and really led by our principles. And the, this visual was is that we wanted to hardwire our values towards what we do. So anything that the Lean Office uh, partnered with operations on had to link to something. There was a whole continuous improvement aspect to it that really linked to our excellence. There was a huge piece around patient experience, which really linked to our caring value. There was a lot of high reliability work that we were doing around mistake proofing and standard work and that really linked to our um, uh, quality and, um, and safety, and then our, a lot of work around engagement, which was really built on leadership behaviors, and that was really around engagement. So when we talk about visual boards and all that, you'll see me reference those. This was a nice visual for our staff. It was simple, and it had our balance scorecard, our strategic initiatives in the center of that, that allowed people to understand that this is not different than what we've been doing already. It's just evolving from what we were doing. 
At that point, we had to deploy Lean throughout the organization. I'm only going to talk about the sites through human resources right now. In the approach we use, we have six different styles of strategies that we use at Hartford Healthcare to deploy in any new organization. So in the human resource organization, what we did is we brought a, 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 a leader that has already rolled out our daily management system that had no idea of anything around human resources. So we picked a marketing person that was a manager, a leader, that really had certain competencies. At that time, we also partnered with HR to look at every single manager in the HR department to know what their employee engagement scores were, to understand what their retention rate was, to really get to know the, every single one of these leaders so that we don't start deploying it through human resources with people that were a little bit more difficult up front. We wanted to make sure that we had pilots of successes, and so we wanted to choose them very strategically. We used what we call one of our strategies is the tree approach, which for each quarter, for around four months, we don't deploy except to a certain cohort of people. We started with our first person, which was our compensation group, and they were probably one of the strongest and most engaged and had best results. So we started with them, and for four months, we only worked with them. We didn't work with anyone else. And the marketing person allowed them to run their huddles until they got competent. They went through some aggressive training, and then they were then able to role model and precept others. And every person had a two preceptor approach. And so that tree just kept growing until the entire human resource department had it deployed throughout the whole organization. And this is around 100 individuals that we're talking about. We had to give them support. So we have two, two different um, roles in our organization. We have a Lean Sensei support who's matrix to a president of each organization and has around three to five different facilitators that report to them. Our Lean office is around 30 people. And so when we did this, we had to make sure that the human resource department was well staffed, so we gave them a full facilitator for that whole journey. And that took around a year to really hardwire just the tier one daily management boards. I'll talk a little bit about a little after that. We also had to partner with our innovation center and our leadership organization on development around how are we gonna start training our people. And it was very different than what we were used to because we were used to 40 hours of training, put them in a class, a little bit of simulation, they go out there, they still don't know how to do it, so we give them another 90 hours of training afterwards, some ad hoc, just in time, it was very inefficient. So we worked with leadership and development and just kind of like blew up this whole thing and just started over again, which really became more of a do uh, and then learn attitude where we went out there, we showed them what, how other people were doing it first, asked them to reflect about it, then put them through a small two to three day simulation where they were going back to the Gemba and actually applying this. But we had to get centers to be able to do this in. So we, were, we had to redesign centers so that they could fit this new way of working. These immersion trainings, what we call them, had really three components. There's a component that they had to learn what A3 problem solving were, there was a component that they had to learn daily management and uh, leader stand at work, and that was their first piece. Then they went out and they did that. They had to show competency on that. Then they came back to what we called um, uh, Immersion 2, which was really our bronze certification, which we borrowed from the Shingo Institute. And that really allowed them to learn now 5S and standard work and t total productive maintenance and all that. And then they went back out for six months and had to show competencies around that. And then they would come back and then they do the last part where they learn now how to be a Kaizen leader, how to do value stream mapping, and understand what Hosh and Connery, what we call strategy deployment is. We also had to create what we called a lean tool set because our facilitator's bandwidth at one point when that tree gets really big becomes a little bit of a challenge. So we had to create some vir virtual uh, simulated tools that allow to tell our leaders how to use tools without calling us for certain things. And so we had to create and partner with our IT department to kind of help us with some of those um, things. This is what our Lean Daily Management Boards look like. Our organization is around 750 departments, and we've currently rolled out around 650 of those departments for the Tier 1 Daily Management Boards. We also have a Tier 2, which is our directors. We have a Tier 3, which is our vice presidents. And we have a Tier 4, which we call our visibility rooms for our presidents, or war rooms. And those uh, were around 70% completed at this point. We have majority of them are physical, and we probably, I would say, have around 10 to 15% that are virtual that we actually had to evolve other organizations to help us with that virtual technology. And we had a lot of people in-house as well that were able to provide some input in that. Leader Standard Work was the biggest uh, challenge for us around um, um, 
uh, rolling it out through the HR department. And the reason that was a little bit of a challenge for us is that you know, leadership and organizational development and in the HR world, there's already a coaching process that was happening, which was very different than our kata process when we rolled this out. So we had to really work together for our, probably, I would say, almost a year to understand how to complement this, that our coaching process is not to tell people how they're going to be succession planning, but really understanding how to do current state, future state, and how to mitigate that gap. We have a maturity so that this does not um, stop because people, we, there's the mentality that this is a program and we wanted to make sure there's no such thing as a program. This is a journey. And so we created those bronze certification milestones, the silver and the gold. Finally, I'm gonna leave with a few things. We wanted to make sure that we were focused on the right things because every single one of these boards on the front line was doing whatever they wanted to do. Uh, there was no strategic initiatives that they really focused on. So for the last three years, we were really focusing on how do we create breakthrough objectives for the organization? How do we cascade it? We worked with our compensation department so that when we cascade it to each president or vice president or director, that that becomes their goals automatically, that they don't have a choice in their goals as they did before, that whatever goes through the organization automatically links back to that. The compensation department was working with us significantly on that, around that in HR. Um, and then we wanted to make sure that we had our targeted Kaizans. I'm going to tell you there's probably almost no Kaizen that we do at this point that does not include an HR person because we're either redeploying someone, we're changing a job description, we're always calling them anyway, so we might as well just include them. Um, and so recently we've just included them in everything that we do around our Kaizen events uh, just because they've become such a critical partner to us. And that's our story. <laughs> This presentation is brought to you by the Lean HR and People Development Summit, a product of Lean Frontiers. Learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash LHR.